Today, we're going to have a look over how we can build a command line application in Ruby. The basics are simple. I'm creating a Ruby file, write something, and then I'll run it. Simple enough. We can also remove the extension and invoke Ruby automatically by using a magic command as the first line of the file. Oh yes, we also need to make this executable. Much better. I can also pass in arguments, but how can we use them? Well, these are exposed through a constant named argv. Let's have a look at it. We can read these arguments as an array. Let's try it out. And that's about it. Writing code and reading arguments this way is feasible only for the simplest of cases. So let's step outside the basics and create something more tangible by building a real application. What I'd like to do is to call this API from the command line. I'll start by creating a gem using Bundler. I think this is what we need to look up. The floating value, which is the rate. I'm going to create this really quick so we can focus on the command line part just a function that takes the currencies and the date. Maybe name it get. Now let's actually create this function and pass in the options. I'm going to construct a URL using the API URL from the example and then replace the values with our own. I'm not concerned with escaping this. I think the fastest way to make an HTTP call is to require open URI. Now, kernel open can also read URLs. Let's try this out. Okay, we just need to edit the gem spec. The error occurred because of the to-do strings. I'm adding a summary and we're okay without a description. There are still some to-dos left. I'm not going to use these fields, so I'll remove them. Let's see now. I'd like to return this value. As far as validations go, at the very least, we need to make sure that the currencies are uppercase and I'll allow date objects. Let's change the arguments. I'm using fetch, so we don't hunt down for any undefined method for near class errors in the future. The base and symbol have to be capitalized and the date needs to be in the year, month, day format. Finally, let's pass the results as JSON and return only the rate. Normally, I would have wrote a class with proper specs, but I wanted to keep this as simple as possible so we can focus on the command line part. Now, let's try this again. It's looking good. 
how can we expose this from the command line? The minus minus bin flag I used earlier generated an executable file where we can call the get method I just created. Though I still need to mark it as executable. The error appears because Ruby fails to find this gem. It will work fine when the gem is installed, but it does cause problems during development. We can fix this by requiring bundler setup. No output. This is fine, it means we have no errors. Next, we need to read the command arguments and invoke the get method we wrote with them. We could do this by hand, as we've seen at the beginning of the video, however, we're going to use a library. There are a lot of options at our disposal and I highly encourage you to try them out. However, I'm going to use the one that Ruby ships with, named optparse. I'm going to require the library and then we're going to gather the past arguments in a hash. Let's call it options. Next I'll make an instance of option parser and then define the behaviors we want. I'll begin by capturing the base currency. The goal is to call this script in the format of currency lookup minus b plus the currency or use the longer form currency lookup minus minus base equals our currency. To do this, we need to pass these forms to the on method as follows short form, long form, the format, and then we'll assign this information to options. The name value, or whatever we type there, is just for documentation purposes, as we'll see a bit later then we need to actually pass the options and print them out to see what's happening. Now let's try this out. As you can see, both the short and long format work fine. Now let's do the same for the symbol. I'll copy this and change it to symbol. Looking good. Lastly, let's do the date. The type should be date. However, to use it, we need to require the opt parse date module. Under the hood, this is using date parse. Now let's see all the options combined. Ok, looks good. Time to use the options hash. Let's print that the currency rate is the value of our get method. This is cool, but if we provide an invalid date, we'll receive an exception. Let's do something about it by printing it nicer. And let's point to the help, which we'll build in a minute. I can also use the current file name instead of the hardcoded name. It's looking good, but there are two things I don't like about this. For example, we might want to pass the command output to a file. I'll just move this to the next line so you can see it better. If we get an error, we won't see it and it will also get saved to the file. This is solved by outputting to std error instead of std out. While we're here, 
let's also capitalize the error message if we try the command out with the wrong date the error is visible on the screen and won't be saved inside the file and with a proper date it works as before the second thing I don't like is that we're exiting the program with a success code this is a problem because we might want to change the script to another command. It could be something like sending an email with the file, or maybe the opposite, letting the user know that an error has occurred. In this case, the something went wrong message should have been printed. So let's exit with an error code. Any number greater than zero will be treated as such. And now we get the message saying something went wrong. Whereas with the correct parameters, we don't receive anything, which is great. There's also one other thing I'd like to handle. If we don't provide any options, we get an error. In this case, I'll rescue the key error exception and show a message saying insufficient arguments. And as above, we request the user to have a look at the help page. And finally, let's make the help page. Similar to the other options, we'll create a minus h, minus minus help option. And then we'll just print the option parcels options. does the job but let's make it prettier by adding some space between the help and the main options cool now we have some extra space here finally I'd also like to show the name of the program and the description we have defined those inside the gem spec and that's where we'll be reading them from Let's read the gem information in a variable. The option banner is the first line. Next, I'm adding a headline with the summary from the gem spec. Looks pretty good. Let's also add some space between the header and the options just like we did for the help. And with this, I think we're done. Before wrapping up, I'm going to install the gem and give it a go. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.